Muchas gracias al señor decano eh, y también gracias a la Facultad de Ingeniería y a la Universidad de los Andes por acogernos este año para Build Peace. Mi nombre es Elena y soy la directora ejecutiva de Build Up, organizadores de Build Peace. Y como ya os habréis dado cuenta algunos con los que he ido hablando y tal vez ahora por el acento, eh, soy española y me complace mucho bienvenidos en castellano. Es la primera vez que tenemos una conferencia bilingüe. Voy a continuar en inglés para bienvenir también a los participantes internacionales. So, welcome to Build Peace 2017. I'm so happy that so many of you have come all the way to Bogota from around the world and from all over Colombia. Many of you have come from very far, overcoming flights and visa difficulties, um, and it's really great to see you all here. So, thank you for coming. And for many of you, I should also say welcome back. This is the fourth of um, the Bill P series of conferences. And some of you come back over and over again. So I guess we must be doing something right. Um, it's wonderful to see familiar faces and to know that we are, over the years, building a community of innovation for peace. The theme of this year's conference is making paper count. New forms of citizen participation in peace agreements. And I want to tell you just a little bit about how we came to that theme, building on what the Dean very kindly already introduced us to. At the first Build Peace Conference in 2014, which took place at in MIT in Boston, we wanted to understand in broad overview what technology and innovation could do in peace building, focusing on four areas, information, communications, gaming, and networking. In 2014, we learned to beware of tech utopias and dystopias because technologies are neutral and what matters is how we use them. The radical inclusion that innovations permit, like it or not, means that new voices that previously were at the margins or at the periphery can now record their own stories and share them through very different media. That works just as well for violence, think about recruitment over social media into armed groups, as it does for peace building. In 2015, Build Peace was in Nicosia, in Cyprus, which is la uh, Europe's last divided capital. And there we asked, by whom and for whom is innovation used to build peace? We talked about empowerment. Who is empowered? By whom and how? And behavior change, and empowered to do what? In 2015, we unpacked ways in which innovation changes who participates in peace building. As a technical infrastructure, Innovation for Peace, we learned, is a series of tools that allow peace builders to communicate with more people in more ways, collect better information, and sustain rela relationships on digital platforms. As an organizational infrastructure, it is a means by which communities and authorities build new participatory processes, foster deeper collaborations, and assume collective responsibility for building peace. And as a social infrastructure, Innovation for Peace circulates ideas and contributes to consensus building about the definition of what peace we aspire to build. So that was 2015. And then in 2016, last year, we were in Zurich. And we tackled the question of change, of transformation, by asking why and how we use innovation for peace. We asked, how can the behaviors and cultural manifestations of individuals and groups be transformed to support a new network of relationships on peace, on which peace can be built. And that's actually a really complicated way of just asking, what are we trying to change? That's the question we asked last year. And we learned that as peace builders, we're trying to affect change both in structures of power and in political spaces. And this poses new challenges for, we, for how we position ourselves as peace builders and peace activists to create nonviolent change. We also reflected that to create a critical mass for peace requires a shift across culture and society. But no social change can work if it doesn't also promote a change in individuals. So to change the world, we also need to change ourselves. And that brings us to 2017. Having explored the what, who, why, and how of innovation for peace, this year is the first time that we explore a specific topic participation in peace agreements, building on everything that we have learned up to now. I think there's one thing that's really important to keep in mind for this conversation. When we say peace agreement here, we don't just mean peace accords. No solamente hablamos de acuerdos de paz en el sentido de un acuerdo 
eh, escrito sobre papel como lo que estamos hablando en Colombia, sino también un acuerdo general, las dos palabras. En español es un poco más difícil hacer esa distinción, creo. No estamos just de about an elite group of mostly men sitting around a table and signing on a line. We're talking about all the other things that the dean also brought up. We mean a true agreement, something an entire society, all of us, can believe in, and hence, making paper count. The conference dialogues, short talks, and workshops will explore in many different ways innovative approaches to amplifying participation in all phases of a peace agreement and bridging the gap between top-down and bottom-up peace-building initiatives. Every year at Build Peace, we bring up a concern about the articulation of innovation for peace as a new white man's burden, in which it is the global north that is the sole repository of knowledge, innovation, and technologies for conflict transformation. That's obviously not true, partly because capacities for peace exist in all contexts, but also because the problem of peace is also one of the global north. If we understand a peace agreement not as a peace accord, but as the collective imagining of ways to live more and more peacefully together, then peace agreements are not just something for Syria, Colombia, and Myanmar. Peace agreements are needed in the global north too, because currently our collective agreement on peace is also at risk in the UK, in the USA, or in Catalonia and Spain. So that's the question the organizing team has pulled together. How do we make paper count? Build Peace is a very participatory conference. Um, you're probably already realizing that. So this is our collective conversation now. We're all innovators here, and as innovators, we are often at the edge, pushing against the odds. This conference is our community. We strive to create a safe space where everyone can share ideas openly. So every year, we give the conference a slogan to help us keep this community spirit in mind. It's basically our one conference rule. Can you? Yeah, great. So in 2014, our slogan was, be tough on ideas, but gentle on people. And then in 2015, our slogan was, be careful with each other so you can be dangerous together. And then in 2016, our slogan was, revolution starts at home, preferably in the, in the bathroom mirror. So that gives you the history. And so this year's slogan, the one that you'll keep in mind for our community spirit is, I don't mean about one side, meet the other side. I mean no more sides. And I've got a special prize to anyone who can uh, identify where that comes from, because it's a pretty obscure reference. I'm particularly excited that we're having this conversation in Colombia, because of the co current context, and also because of how much there is to share here. And to put that a bit more in context, I'd like to introduce Diana Dajer, the executive director of Policentrico, who are the co-organizers of Build Peace this year. Thank you. Thank you.